All right. Can you guys hear us? We're good. Rohan, you can hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Can you guys hear me okay? All right. Welcome to C6. Uh, you guys saw an informational video. I'm Samuel Kai. This is Rohan. You can introduce yourself. Hey, everyone. I'm Rohan. Um, we're your instructors for C696 this semester. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, just very quickly. Into the slides. Okay. So, goals for today. Uh, we want to introduce ourselves to you guys. We want to go over the main course goals, go over how we're going to deliver this course, and how we're going to take attendance for at the lectures on Twitch. Um, things are online now, so this is especially important. We want to go over the syllabus for you guys, and we want to answer the questions, uh, any questions you guys have towards the end. So, First things first, CS196 is for students by students. And so, me and Rohan, we are both undergraduate students, and everyone on our course is an undergraduate student. This is really cool. We are one of the only classes in the entire nation that are completely undergraduate student run. There are not many classes like this, and as far as I know, we're the only class like this. And so, what do you get from that? You get things that are definitely very relevant to you. You get things like streams on Twitch. You get usage of Discord. We are barely older than you. We know what you guys like because this is what we like ourselves. So who are we? I'll introduce myself first. So I'm on the right here. Uh, our cameras are swapped, my bad. But my name is Samuel Cotty. I'm majoring in computer science and linguistics. And I will be graduating December 2021. I've worked for one Caterpillar and Country Financial as an intern. And uh, I'm interested in CS education. So that's lucky for you guys because this is what I love to do teaching classes and learning how people learn. I'm a nerd about that. And fun fact I love Chipotle. I'm a Chipotle enthusiast. So, Rohan, introduce yourself. I'll take yeah, my so off the screen real quick. Sounds yep. good. Hey, everyone, my name is Rohan Suresh. Uh, I'm S major, junior, graduating May 2022. I'm also working towards a dual degree in econometrics and quantitative economics, undeclared at the moment. I've worked for Security Financial and Workflow Limited, and my interests are there. I like data mining, classifiers, and identification problems, and research in those two topics. I'm also interested in fintech, and currently I'm experimenting and fitting eight hours of sleep in less than eight hours. As some of you may know, I'm on the other side of the planet right now, so uh, time differences are kind of crazy. Anyways. Next slide. All right. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce you guys to the class a little bit for the next few slides, and then I'll hand it off to Rohan again towards the end. We don't really do a lot of lectures like this, where both me and Rohan are both going at the same time. But uh, for the first lecture, we figured both of you guys should get to know us, and in the future, we'll have just one of us going at a time. Uh, okay. So what are we doing in this class? So are we having technical issues? Is everything still good? Fine. Okay. I think everything is fine. All right, sorry. So what are we doing in this class? So there are two major components in this class. We have the project component, and then we have the lecture and homework component. So the reason why on the screen we have the project component a lot larger is because the project is the heart of this course. And so we'll talk about that first. So that is the heart of this course, the semester project. This is the centerpiece of CS196. And so the reason why this is the centerpiece of the course is because project experience is super, super important. As a computer scientist, software engineer, whatever you are, you have to have projects. And our project is a little bit different because you're, learn you're working in a structured team on an expansive team project, and you are working under a project manager. By working on this project, you'll be able to boost your resume, and you'll have a talking point with recruiters. Recruiters love to see project experience on resumes. This will be super helpful for you. And also, exclusive to fall 2020, you'll get experience with working remotely. If you get an internship for the next summer, it is almost certain that it will be remote. So you can get started early on what it's like to work on a remote software engineering team. We also run our teams in Agile. 
And so we'll talk a little bit more about what Agile is, but Agile is the industry standard for team management. So in other words, the projects that you will work on in this course are how things are managed and run in industry. This is the kind of experience that people don't really get until their first internship. So you will be able to get this kind of experience now in this course. And finally, in this course, we enforce proper version control usage in these projects. So by the end of the semester, ideally, you should be able to be a master of Git and using Git in a team. And we'll talk a little bit more about what Git is. So how does the project work? I see some questions in the chat already about this. Uh, you will work under a project manager, manager from our course staff, and this project manager will guide you and your team to turn your big ideas into real projects. So we want to give you as much freedom as possible with these projects. These projects can be whatever you want, and they can be about whatever you want, and they can be in whatever you want. Whatever programming languages, frameworks, libraries, whatever it is, we allow you to use that. And so many of you guys have these great ideas, but you're not really sure where to start. So in CS196, we give you some guidance, we give you some structure to be able to take your large ideas and actually make something real out of it. So when I took this course, what I did for my project was I, me and my team, we created an app that suggests haircuts for you based on how you look and what features you have. This is something that, you know, I'm a little passionate about. I made working on the project really fun, and my team loved it. And by the end of the semester, even though at the start we didn't think we could do it, we were able to actually produce an app that we were all very happy with. So some examples from previous semesters, People have made like, Reddit data visualization tools. Some people have made toy cars that are fully autonomous. And these are groups that are, you know, full of people that have either never programmed before or even very experienced. So you can get creative. And so extraneous uh, project information. So we will send out a form where you guys can fill it out and fill out your interests. And we will pair you up with other students and a mentor who share similar, similar interests. And so together, you guys will come up with an idea and a minimum viable product. We'll talk more about what the minimum viable product is once we actually start the project. But this is something that you will work on throughout the entire semester. And in the midterm presentation, you will have one of these. Uh, this is important because we think that it's important for you guys to be able to know how to present. When you have an internship, you are expected at some point in your internship to present what kind of work you did. Uh, throughout the summer or whatever, you know, if you have a fall internship, whatever it is. So you need to be able to have these skills. So we will have a midterm presentation and final presentation. So projects will start on week three, and we're going to send a bunch of information about them before week three, of course. But in the meantime, think of some ideas. Some of you guys might already have ideas. Uh, think of whatever problems you want to solve, whatever you're passionate about, whatever you think would be interesting. So that is enough about the project component of the class. So the project component of this class is massive. You will have a lot of fun with it, and you will be able to do great things. But we also have a component of the class that is lectures and homework. So what exactly are we teaching in the lectures? I'll start off by telling you guys what the first two things that we're teaching are, and then Rohan will take care of the rest. So in the lecture component of the class, oh, Discord notifications, not good. Um, we are going to be starting off before the projects start by teaching you guys Bash and Git. So Bash is the terminal and Git is version control. These two things are essential for every computer scientist. And this is something that is, despite being really, really important, it's something that a lot of students never actually learn or never actually properly learn. So we, as students, wanted to include this in this class because we know how important it is. And we know exactly how much people struggle with it. So we are going to teach you guys these two technologies that are essential to learn. And we're going to teach them to you as well as we possibly can. And you'll have experience working on these in your projects. So you can, by the end of the semester, be a master of these two technologies. So like we said, Bash is, a, uh, is the terminal. It's a Unix shell, command language, and it is very po powerful. You can use it to run commands, create and edit files. This will be the very first thing that we start teaching starting on Thursday, and we'll go into next week. 
Then after that, we'll learn about Git, which is a version control system. You probably have already worked on this a little bit, maybe in CS125. And Git is incredibly important because you're going to use this for other classes in computer science. You're going to use this at your internships and your jobs. So it is super important to understand these technologies super well. I'll hand it off to Ron to talk more about what we will be lecturing this class outside of the product component. All right, can everybody hear me okay? Should be good. All right, cool. All right, so the first language we're gonna teach you guys is Python. So the reason we picked Python is because we wanted to focus more on programming concepts and not just on the language. And we thought Python was the greatest way to do that and also really helps because a lot of projects that people uh, uh, make are in python so it helps you if you have no experience to have a language that's really powerful to work with on your project so we want to introduce technologies that might be useful in your project so for example the django framework which is one of the best client client server frameworks out there right now and we'll use python to give you hands-on experience with the contest we cover in lecture so everything we teach we'll show you how to implement that in in lecture as well in python and this gives you an extremely powerful tool that you can use going forward, not just in this class, but interviewing. If you're doing research, it's great for scripting. It's great for side projects. Python is a great language that I think everybody should learn. And you probably will use some point through your college career. Oop, I went backwards. All right, the next, are we on the rest slide? Sammy, could you move us there yeah. if we're not? You're, you're there, you're there, you're good. Okay, cool. It's lagging, but on my end. Okay, the next language we're teaching you is Rust. So this is very, very exciting. So firstly, Rust isn't taught, it's taught at very few universities. I think that you can literally count on one hand how many universities teach Rust. And this is an up and coming language. It's very modern. And for two years in a row, it's been uh, Stack Overflow's most loved programming language. So the reason we picked this language is because we wanted to teach you something that you wouldn't see in a typical classroom. Rust is something that isn't covered anywhere. And we want to teach you modern, modern methods to implement complex programming concepts, like concurrency. And using program like, programming language like Rust, you'll have a unique perspective as you go through the rest of the curriculum. Because the way things are normally implemented in like C or C++, Rohan. a lot of those technicalities, yeah. Uh, I think we're still on the slide for some reason. Yeah, that's what uh, I thought we were on. Can you move us to the that slide? Well, that's just one case. second. Yeah. I'm just gonna refresh the scenes real quick. It should have switched, but okay. Here, I'll send it back to you. Cool. Um, sorry, guys. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, it should be should be updating now. Okay. All right. Cool. Sorry about that. Let me repeat the slide again. So, Rust, as I said before, is an upcoming programming language, and for two years in a row, it's been Stack Overflow's most loved programming language from their developer survey. The reason we picked this language is because it's something that you will not see in a typical classroom. And we want to teach you a modern method to use a complex programming concepts, like concurrency. And the benefit of teaching you this now is that although a lot of these concepts may seem incredibly tricky, and you might not understand why we're teaching them to you, when you go into your higher level classes like 225, 241, these hard core classes, you have a unique perspective on how a lot of these core ideas are taught, like concurrency, because we're going to show you how it's done in the modern world right now. All right, so delivery plus attendance. This is super important, so please pay attention. So as you guys know, we're live streaming lectures here on Twitch on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central Time. So at the moment, uh, we're planning to have two lectures a week, but we will probably ease off towards the end of the semester so you guys can have more time to focus on your projects, so probably just once a week. And we highly recommend attending uh, live lectures because we not only can you have questions and answers with the instructor, we also have interactive quizzes with extra credit opportunity. So if you are in top three or top five in the quiz, which is Kahoot by the way, so it's super fun, you can get extra credit. But if you are in the other side of the planet, you don't have to tune in at 4 a.m., get your sleep, that's really important. Uh, so if you're ever, ever unable to make it a lecture, you can find the lecture on Twitch right after the stream and we'll put it on YouTube afterwards so you can find it later for your reference too. To get the attendance, we'll have a prayer learn quiz, which will be very, very easy. It's basically just gonna be checking whether you watch the lecture or not. So the question will basically be things we said explicitly in the lecture. So you, everything that you wanna find, you can find in the lecture itself. You answer the quiz and you'll get your attendance points. So don't worry about 
having to make it to every single lecture. We know life happens. If you ever have to miss it, that's totally fine. Syllabus, okay. So our syllabus can be found on the homepage of the CS196 website. These are hyperlinked here. A lot of you have already found the website, uh, but this is the URL and all the resources that you need will be on the web website. Prerequisites of the class, okay, none. There are no prerequisites for the class. You really need to know nothing about programming, nothing about starting a project, nothing at all before you take this class. And why is that? Well, it's because we wanna teach you all the skills you need to go from having no experience to learning your first language, to learning how to use technologies that are used in modern projects and then implement your own project from start to finish. And we really think that that process is really beneficial to students' growth, not only as a developer, but professionally in their career, because working on an actual project is what you will do in the real world. So how about grading? How are we gonna grade you guys? So we don't want you to worry about your grade, but here's the breakdown. So lecture attendance is 10% and you have three drops. So to show up, do the quiz or watch the lecture and do the quiz and you will get 10%. That's pretty much three points. We're not gonna grade you on your accuracy. It's just um, attendance. Your project is 65% of your grade. So the reason it's such a big chunk is because this class is centered around your project. Everything we're teaching you for the most part is to help you build our project. And your forms will be detailed in the project grading section, the syllabus. A lot of it isn't necessarily on how well your project comes out in the end. We don't wanna grade you on whether you made some, something revolutionary and you start up or something simple. We want to grade you on the process of building a project. Um, homework is 25% of your grade. Oh, I'm getting Discord notifications. Uh, homework 25% of your grade. This is mostly straightforward. A lot of it will be exactly what you see in the lecture, just slightly building off of that. We don't want to overwork you because we understand that you're busy other things, but we do think homework is important so you can cement what you learn in lecture. And finally, extra credit. So we have 10 whole percent of extra credit, a whole letter grade. And we have many different ways you can get that throughout the semester. So don't worry about grades. You will, if you put the work in, you'll get an A. Historically, most people in this class will get an A. So as long as you put in the work, do the homeworks, if your project is decent, you know, you just follow the proper steps, you'll get an A in this class. So don't worry about your grades at all, even if the concepts seem tricky. And here's the project breakdown. I'm not gonna go into this too much, but I just want you guys to like take a quick skim over it and see that we aren't necessarily grading you on what you come up with. We want you to have fun with the project. We want you to learn how projects are being developed and not worry about the actual final product. If you're following proper version control, proper communication, if your code base is clean and very clear, well documented, you'll have a good grade. So don't worry about, we don't want you to worry about the final product so much we want you to worry about the process of making a really cool project. Office hours, okay, so because we're online, office hours will be on Discord, and there'll be a schedule posted online very soon. And homework later, so you can come to the office hours if you want homework later help. So for any homework you have issues with, setting up Git maybe, setting up a bash terminal on Windows, you can just come to the office hours and we'll be more than happy to help you with that. And if you need help with your project, like you're curious about a new tech stack, like you never worked with Pandas in, to do data analysis, you never worked with scikit-learn to build a classifier or like a decision tree, something like that. Hop into Discord and we'll be more than happy to help you with that. All right, uh, so Sammy, this is you. All right, yeah, I'll let me go ahead and switch back to my scene. All right, so it sounds wonderful, I hope, the class so far. You know, you guys are learning relevant things that'll be useful beyond your degree. It'll be useful for the rest, as you go through the rest of the curriculum, you'll be learning a lot of new languages and frameworks that are either going to be, you know, nice to learn or very useful to learn. What's the catch, right? There's gotta be a catch somewhere. This isn't that much of a crazy catch, okay? But this is a one credit hour course and it's going to be more work than one credit hour. We will say that right now. However, as Rohan said, there is a full letter grade of extra credit available through many different opportunities. And so you shouldn't have to worry about your grade in this class. Uh, and this is, I think, a, a fair estimate on how much work this class will be roughly per week. It'll be around seven hours. Um, towards the end of the semester, or maybe you know, in a few months, we might shift away from double lectures a week and just go towards one lecture a week since 
you know, with things being online, uh, you know, people don't really want to tune into a whole bunch of lectures, I think. So lectures might go down to one hour, but altogether, when you meet your projects, you'll have about one hour every single week to meet with your projects. You'll have, if you're following along with the lectures, the homeworks really shouldn't take very long, maybe like an hour or two. And uh, outside of your meetings, projects should be roughly like two hours a week. So it de really depends on the background that you have going into the class. As we said, you don't need to have a programming background going into this class as long as you're concurrently enrolled with like CS125, for example. So this is the expected time commitment for the course. Do take this course for the credit hour. Take it for what you will get out of the class, the experience that you will gain, the knowledge. It's not about the credit hour. Otherwise, you'll be severely disappointed. There are easier credit hours to get. Take this class for what you can get out of it. So now, now that we got that out of the way, this is very important. Information flow. We are a completely online course. So information is more important than ever to get out. We can't expect you guys to come into a lecture hall. That's how it used to be. But now we need proper communication with you guys since we don't have face-to-face -face interaction. So there are a couple ways to get in touch with us and there are a couple ways to get in touch with you. The most important thing is to join the Piazza. Okay, we have Piazza. We can post a link to it in the in the uh, Twitch chat. I hope someone does that now. Join the Piazza. This is how we're going to send mass emails to you guys when assignments are released and uh, we have something that we need you to fill out. And this is where you guys can communicate with us. If you guys have any general course questions or you need help on a homework or something technical, just post your question on Piazza. Make it private if it involves code. And it's important to use the forum, which is the Piazza, because we don't want you guys emailing us about something that, you know, 30 different people are probably going to ask. If you guys have a question, oftentimes someone else has the same exact question. So that's what Piazza is for. Put your questions on there. Discord. This is how you guys are going to communicate with your project groups. In week three, once we actually split you guys into project groups, every team is going to have a channel on Discord and you guys can communicate through there. Um, contacting instructors, if you, can ever, if you can't ever complete a course obligation, contact us, let us know, and we'll see if we can do anything about it. Um, and if you can, join the Discord now. Uh, someone else is posting the Discord link in chat. We're going to need you guys to Discord for something a little special later on in the lecture. And uh, we also have our course website. So the course website is where we are going to put archived lectures and slides. The slides for this are already available on the resources tab on our course website, cs196.cs.illinois.edu. That's also in the Twitch chat now. Um, this is where we are going to have our lectures, slides, and videos. Um, if you are in a bad time zone, make sure, as Rohan said, make sure you look at the VODs on Twitch because those go up right after the lecture. We will eventually upload to YouTube, but check Twitch first, because that's where it's going to be right away. It's automatically archived. And if you're on the fence about the class or you can't find a seat, join the Discord anyway. Join the Piazza anyway. You don't need to be registered to join. Um, we'll see if you can get a seat. And if you aren't registered, I hope that this lecture is getting you a little bit excited about the course. So since we aren't in person, previously what we used to do is we have everyone in the lecture hall, Siebel 1404 here, write an idea on a paper airplane and all at once throw it to all the core staff in the front of the lecture hall. And it was a wonderful time. We all enjoyed it. But sadly, we are not in the lecture hall. We are on twitch.tv. So it sucks. I know. It's a shame. I'm sorry that I put it in front of you guys like this, that this could have been us. But what we can do instead is one member on our lovely core staff created a paper airplane emoji that looks just like this on our Discord. So join the Discord if you haven't already. Go into the Discord chat that says spam paper airplanes. Write an idea that you might have for the project that's coming to your mind right now. Or just spam the paper airplane. And uh, we can do that now. Let me see if I can put it on the Discord, on the 
I hope you guys are spamming it super hard right now. Let's see. Also, guys, there. remember to write, write an idea with your airplane. Don't just spam for no reason if you can. Yeah, try to write, try to write an idea with your paper airplane. Um, you guys are doing a great job with spamming it. But yeah, if you remember, airplanes are great. Yeah, if you remember, in the lecture hall, we usually write ideas <laughs> in the in it's the paper late, airplane. It's yeah, it's too late. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed yeah. that part. I hope. I hope you get the kind of experience and the kind of feeling out of it. Um, and so now we have plenty of time for any questions that you guys might have about the course. Feel free to just drop them in the Twitch chat. Any questions you guys have about the course, anything that we weren't clear about, or anything you guys want some more information on, uh, me and Rohan are here. We'll actually, I'll put in the, the double, double slide. Double scene. Yeah, so if you're in the live lectures, uh, Gadget and KOT, don't do the homework. Uh, we just take your attendance from attending the quiz. Yeah, so as Rohan said, so when we actually start taking attendance for lectures, this one obviously is not attendance. We're not taking anything for it. But in the future, what it's going to be, starting on Thursday, actually, is we will have Kahoot questions, where as long as you're following along in the Kahoot, you get credit. However, if you're in a different time zone or for some reason you can't attend the lecture, then the video archive will be up and we'll have questions on Prairie Learn that are super easy. As long as you watch the archive, you should be able to answer the questions and you will get credit. You just only have to do one of those two things. You don't need to do both. There's no benefit in doing both either. Yep, and at Moo E1B, do we have lectures on Thursday this week? Yes, we do. We're teaching Bash, so get excited about that. And for uh, the... Wait, so these attendance quizzes are in Prairie Learn. So if you're in lecture, the quiz is Kahoot. We do a live Kahoot during the lecture. But if you're watching it up asynchronously, they'll be on Prairie Learn. They'll be the exact same questions too. So no point doing them twice. Yeah. Uh, someone says, how long do we have after lectures are done to complete the Prairie Learn quiz? It's only going to be like uh, a couple days. We don't want you guys to wait too long because keeping track of live lectures is kind of the benefit to having them. We don't want you guys to fall really far behind only, you know, depending on the archive ones. So we, we will set the due date for the Perry Learn ones a couple days after the video goes live. And he asked, are you guys always <laughs> this sexy or is it just today? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> um, this chat is wild. Yeah. Uh, no filter. When do we get in contact right, with our PM? So week three, we will assign you guys groups with your project manager, and we will send information before then about the projects. We can't start now because this is just the first day, but we will get you guys information on the projects. And a cool thing about that is we're actually like writing our own algorithm for that, so that based on your interests and time zones, you will find a PM in a group who best fits that. So we're working yeah. on that right now, so get excited about it. You'll be in a group of people who are interested in the same things as you, hopefully. Someone says, when is the latest you can join 196? I would sign up as soon as you can. Technically, there is a university-wide ad deadline, which is like September something. But I, there, another deadline is how many seats we have available. And registration has been open for a day, and there's already like 160 seats in, and the, you left. So if the class is full, you can't add. Um, so I admitted seats available. I would have you guys uh, join as soon as you can if you're planning on taking the class. Uh, based uh, on the IDE question, we don't have a record. Oh, sorry, go ahead. So I was going to say, someone asked if you have to add the class on Prairie Learn. Yes, you do. That is how we deliver our homeworks. We will have homeworks and the lecture questions on there. Sorry, Rohan, continue. Yeah, sorry about the IDE question. So we don't have like a specific ID you need for this class. I think whatever you want is usually best. If you're PM, something you probably want to go with that we'll also introduce you to vim and nano vim is a really popular text-based editor if you guys haven't heard of that before we'll cover that in the bash lecture uh but we'll be using vs code for a lot of the lectures it's just mm -hmm. easier and if you're proficiency out of 125 you still in 196 absolutely this class is open for people at 125 126 ec 220 yeah you guys are more than welcome to take the class mm -hmm. 
Uh, how many people in a one group? Usually we try to keep project groups around five to six people because that's usually the typical size of like software engineering or like data scientist groups. Super large groups don't work very well and super small groups might be a little hard to get things done. So we usually try to keep it around like five, but we have to see how many project managers and how many students we have. And then we'll just work it out from there. So someone asked, I'm at six to hours already. It takes cost me too much, like way too much work in your opinion, or do you think it should be fine? Uh, so, wait, Sam, were you speaking there? I couldn't hear you. Uh, no, you can, go ahead. No, sorry about that. Well, so it depends the class you're taking. 16 credit hours could really mean anything. Like if you're taking 16 tech electives, it could be really hard. But you really just, I would say, just look at your schedule, see how much homework you have, how much time spending lectures, how hard your classes are, and you can make that call yourself. So 196 is about 4.57 hours a week. And if you can consistently hit that, you'll be more than fine to take this class. And again, don't worry about your degree in this class. We give a lot of extra credit out. And if you do like the basic, like bare bones for everything, you will get an A. Yeah. Um, people are asking me what my Chipotle order is. We can get to that after the lecture time. Uh, what is the Perry Learn code? There shouldn't be a code, but if there, if it's restricted, I can let the homework team know. You don't have to worry about Perry Learn right now. We will get in contact with you guys when a homework is released. Right now, there is no homework release, so you guys don't have to worry about it. Most important thing is just join the Piazza. Make sure you join the Piazza now if you can. Do not put that off. That is how we communicate with you. So just make sure you join the Piazza. Mm -hmm. uh, so how is attendance recorded today? So attendance here. Oh, wait. Sorry, so latency there. Sam, are you talking? Nope, you're good. All right, cool. Sorry. Uh, so lecture is recorded by Twitch. So we're just going to take this. So this will be up on Twitch for the next week. And we will take this and put it on YouTube as well. So you can access it after it's off Twitch. How's attendance recorded today? There is no attendance recorded today. This lecture is just purely for information. We will start taking attendance on Thursday. Yep. The course website is cs196.cs.illinois.edu, or you can just Google CS196 on Google, and we should be the first ones that pop up. Uh, and also, actually, yeah, that, that's how you find our website. Yeah, I'm also putting the link in the chat for you guys. Okay, so if you watch the lecture later, there'll be a quiz on Prairie Learn, which will be the exact same quiz that people do in the lecture. You just have to answer that quiz to get attendance. Was there a quiz for the previous lecture? There was no previous lecture. This is the first one. Welcome to the class. <laughs> It looks like the Piazza button is broken. So let's just post the Piazza link. Can, can you get the Piazza link, Rohan? Yeah, for sure. I've asked our team to update the Piazza link too. Yeah. I'm spamming in the chat for you guys. If not, uh, by the way, Uh, Rohan, I think you lagged a little bit there. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. Okay. I was just saying that the one in the slide is correct. Am I good? Yeah, you're good now. All right, that is the right Piazza right, link. Great. We'll have to fix the button on the website. Can I take CS196 next semester? Yeah, you can take CS196 any semester. You don't have to take any certain courses concurrently or something. That's uh, You can add it to any schedule that you have. It's just most popular to take it concurrently with CS125 in the fall. But we have it in the spring. Uh, I don't know if we'll be teaching it in the spring. We might, we'll might probably hand it off to someone else. But um, if you want to take it with us, this guy, add it this semester. And uh, honestly, that should be the only reason why you take this class. Uh, like. Do we need to say any more, <laughs> right? Like, I just, promise to make the lecture as fun as possible. It's exactly. a great time.
Is there any downside of taking it? So someone says, is there any downside of taking it in the spring? Uh, The class is smaller in the spring. Um, Sometimes the course is redesigned in the spring. And you'll be with less CS majors in the spring. Uh, That's about it. Most majors take it in the fall because that's when most majors take 125. Most non-majors take 125 in the spring. And so then most non-majors are in 196. That's basically the only difference. And it's about a fourth of the size in the spring. Uh, someone asked, uh, I, I don't have a program. Will I hinder my group's progress? I think that's a great question. You will absolutely not hinder group's progress. So firstly, we teach you everything you need to know before you start uh, the actual project. So we will cover Python, the basics of that, before you even like start your project. And more importantly, your PMs, uh, we've we tell them to basically give you tasks that are fit to your ability. So you'll be given tasks that are not only meaningful to the group, but also meaningful to your personal development as well. So you're not gonna be doing something that you think is impossible, or you won't be doing busy work like doing documentation. Your PMs will give you work that is useful to the team and meaningful to you as well. So you'll yeah. always be useful to your team, don't worry. And I wanna add, if it makes you feel better, I took this course with zero prior knowledge uh, about anything. I took, I learned from 125. 125 is an excellent course. As long as you're taking program course like 25 and currently with 196, you will be just fine. Um, I took the course without background and here I am. So I, I survived and I had a great time. So, and I'm here to look out for you. We, I, we designed this course in a way where everyone will be challenged regardless of background, whether you're brand new at programming or even programming since the day you were born. You will have some element of challenge in this course. We just want the people that are more experienced to, you know, not be annoying and just help out those. Same message in 125. Help out those who are less comfortable. Uh, Don't be weird about it. Yeah, there's a bunch of other questions here. So what if you're a slow learner? Well, don't worry about that. A good thing about Python is that a lot of things you'll need you can find online. And we're not gonna say you can't take this online. Like we encourage using these APIs and packages. Like we don't want you to reinvent the wheel for a lot of things. You're more than welcome to use resources that are available to you online. Don't copy any code directly, like don't copy a GitHub, but you should use resources online. And you, the best way to learn, I think, is by emulating things you see online. So if you wanna figure out how to do something, you Google it, you see how it's done, you learn from there. And I think that's what makes working an actual project really beneficial to learning new languages. Um, if you already know Python, will Rust be easy to learn? So Rust is a very interesting language. It's very different than most things you work with, the way memory is handled, the way variables are handled. Uh, I think it doesn't really line up well. I mean, if you know the programming language, it will be a good way, way to get ahead. But I think most people will be on like even footing starting with Rust. Mm-hmm. And also uh, for Rust, I mean, I like to think that we delivered Rust content fairly well to those who are, you know, not comfortable at all. Really, nobody knows Rust. I mean, it's a really new language, and it's very offbeat, I guess you can say. Not many people know it. I doubt maybe a couple people in this class might know it out of, like, the 200 people registered. So, and also, like, in the Rust community, our lectures have gotten a lot of praise for, you know, being easy to follow and stuff. So I hope that you won't be too nervous about picking up Rust. We are going to do our best to deliver the information to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, someone asked, is Rust and Python enough for projects? And yeah, absolutely. I think Python alone is enough for most projects you'll be working on. We're also gonna teach you the Django framework, which is a great tool to do uh, client server uh, projects. And it's very, very intuitive. And I think it's a great way to learn how to do these bigger projects. Rust, I don't think a lot of people work in Rust last semester for their project. We just use Rust to teach you cool concepts. I think Python is what most people use, Python or TypeScript. And how do you group us into teams? So we're, we'll send out a form by the second week asking about what topics you're interested in. So we'll have around five to six topics, like big CS topics, like, you know, data mining, data visualization, uh, CS for good. And you will rank them. And based on your rankings and based on PM's rankings and based on your time zone too, we'll try and pair you with people who we think will be a best fit for you. Yeah. Um, also, someone said, 
Uh, would you say for those not taking 125, taking uh, learning Python first would be a detriment? Uh, we're expecting that people aren't taking 196 to learn how to program. We're just an add-on course. So uh, if you're, I mean, most people in this class are taking 125 concurrently. If they aren't, they're in 126 where you're expected to already know how to program. And, or maybe like ECE 220, which is also a programming course. So I guess people aren't really learning Python first, right? They're learning Java or C or C++ or whatever other programming classes we have are in. So uh, I think Python is a very powerful tool to have under your belt. You can use it in the future. If you're interviewing for a company, you can use it to solve problems in your interview. Uh, you can use it for your own side projects. Sometimes you need to throw something together, like a script to do something. Python is excellent for that. So um, yeah, I hope that answered your question. Someone had a cool, interesting point. They said, I did Django and that was really hard. So I agree, Django can be really intimidating when you first work with it. Like, like the first time I it was, I saw Django was my freshman year in like CS411 for like a big project. And I felt pretty out of my depth. I really had no clue how to work with it. And I still sound much bigger project without knowing how it worked. But then recently, like when I followed an actual tutorial and I like learned it properly, I found it was pretty intuitive. And we'll teach you not just how to work with the Django framework, we'll teach you something called the MVC controller. Uh, so model view controller format, and it's how a lot of these frameworks are built on. And from there, it makes a lot of sense going into Django how to build your app. So hopefully we can, even if Django seems daunting, hopefully we can teach it to you in a way that isn't as scary. Uh, people are talking a bit about Rust, and I just wanted to touch on this. Uh, we're not really teaching Rust expecting people to like use it in their day-to-day -day lives. We're mainly teaching Rust because if you already know C or C++, I think you'll find it very interesting to learn. And if you don't know anything like C or C++ or even the program at all, if you go through the rest of the curriculum, CS225, CS241, you'll be able to approach those concepts with an interesting perspective because Rust is a language designed to solve a lot of the issues that are in C, C++, these kinds of languages, which are the languages that are taught in 225, 241, et cetera. So we're teaching Rust, not expecting you guys to use it in every single day. That's definitely not the point. It's more just to deliver some concepts in a cool way in an up-and-coming language that is, you know, praised very much, as we said in the lecture, uh, with the Stack Overflow survey. So that's the main goal of Rust, and it's also a very specific kind of programming language. So, yeah. Um, For someone who asked about the uh, how to get internship lecture, don't worry, we did one last semester, and I thought I think it was pretty useful, pretty intuitive. Uh, so we will probably do that again if there's enough demand for it. The sun went down in the middle of the lecture, so I turned the lights on. <laughs> We're good. I didn't realize how dark I was. Hello, everyone. Um, Will any of you be impressed if I know Rust? That's a good question. I think knowing a bunch of languages alone is enough to impress an interview, because I think anybody can learn a language or claim they know a language. I think it's more what you do with it. So I think that project that you have from 196 is worth much more than knowing a language really well, because a lot of people can claim they know languages, but if you have a project, not only can you claim you know the language, you're also showing the recruiter that you have the skills to do something with that. Is Rust being used a lot in the industry? Uh, Rahan, did you answer that? Uh, I did not. OK, so yes, Rust is starting to be used a lot in industry. It is getting picked up. Uh, Rust and another language called Golang. Um, languages like Java, they're kind of dying out. Uh, they're not really, you know, they're they're very much going backwards. Uh, and like even 125 is considering switching away from Java for these kinds of reasons. So Rust is used in industry because a lot of the really large code bases with C and C++ are very hard to maintain as things get super large. And Rust solves a lot of the issues. And we'll talk about this later in the semester when we go into Rust. Um, it solves a lot of the issues that are in C and C++ and other systems programming languages. So yes, it is being, started, uh, being used a lot in industry now. 
And uh, it's mainly for very high performance, like very large scale backend systems, um, not really for like web dev or something. So Rust is a very specific style used for a very specific style and uh, sector of programming and software engineering. But I will say, yes, it is being used in industry with Golang. Those two are picking up Steam as the future of systems programming. Yeah, and circle back on Sammy's point. That's why someone asked, like, will I be using Rust a lot? You won't be using Rust a lot because Rust is used primarily for like, systems programming, similar to C. Like, you won't be using C in your day to day unless you're systems programming. You'll probably use Python for scripting your own personal project. So, Rust, again, is kind of like an improvement on C and C because it allows you a lot of powerful systems programming things that are very low level and gives you a lot of control while also being very, very safe. And we'll talk about that in the lecture, don't worry. All right, uh, people are asking me about my Chipotle order very religiously, and questions are slowing down, so I will answer it. Um, depending on the day, I get a burrito or a burrito bowl, okay? It depends on the day. Uh, I get white rice, black beans, and I actually get double portions for those if I get a bowl, because they don't charge extra for it. So double white rice, double black beans, fajita veggies, it is essential. Uh, I usually get chicken because it's like the cheapest and I think it tastes quite nice. On a nice day, I'll get like steak or something or barbacoa, also very tasty, but mainly chicken. Then I will get the uh, corn salsa, very tasty, and the hot salsa. I think these two together work very nicely. I get cheese, lettuce. Uh, what else is on that part of the line? Hmm. Sometimes guacamole. If I'm feeling a little bougie, you know. Um, am I missing anything? I don't think so. Yeah, 